I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes till the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Either we heal as a team or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope you guys tune in in about uh, an hour and 50 minutes for our live stream, 9 o'clock Eastern, where we'll be talking about what are the Dallas Cowboys doing. We do have word, the Cowboys, be it late to the party, now actually have uh, their second bring back. They brought back Rico Daddle. Of course, they brought back Jordan Lewis. Um, I think these are actually good moves, quite honestly. Um, now at least we have two running backs on the roster, and these are not real, real expensive ones. Uh, Jordan Lewis knows your system, knows your guys, knows Al Harris, and he'll be another year removed from the ACL. Uh, was it ACL? I can't remember from from the injury. I can't remember what the injury was. We've had so many injuries lately. Like you know, guys are recovering from it, but. We didn't do a Michael Gallup and sign him to a big, big deal. It's only like a $2.4 million contract, which should be able to leave you with enough money to be able to bring back a Stephon Gilmore. And I believe that our back end is actually in really good shape. And if we can, now that we've got Eric Kendricks, if we can add another linebacker to the mix, if uh, Overshone comes back, you know, uh, not having lost too much from his ACL, your linebacker core might be okay. The big question will be is, will they ever get any money together? And I'm going to say for people who are tired of Dak Prescott and want him out of here, even though you may have been looking around at all of those first-round drafted quarterbacks that have been literally playing musical chairs and giving away for a song. We even have one of those guys here in Dallas in Trey Lance. You know, we're talking about the Mac Joneses. We're talking about the Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson is so bad. How bad is he? They're talking about they may have to take trade him and one of their picks to somebody else just to take them off their hands. That actually is a better move than them taking the cap hit. That's how bad Zach Wilson is. You know, you can look at the Sam Darnolds, who's he's doing the Ryan Fitzpatrick tour of playing for teams, literally playing for everybody. You've seen Jimmy G, who's now gone back to uh, to the Rams. Is he? Got, I think he's gone to the Rams, and of course, Kirk Cousins going to uh, the Atlanta Falcons. Um, it's just been crazy. All of these first round drafted quarterbacks that are all over the place. And yet, we have Cowboy fans that say, just trade him. Just get rid of him. He's a bum. Okay. Be that as it may, for those who hate Dak Prescott, you heard this morning that the Cowboys, with his $10 million bonus, restructured it. Okay? Restructured his contract with that, giving him $4 million of cap relief. Now, here's the good news is... If they don't work out a long-term deal, they could continue to restructure. The only problem with restructuring is you're just putting that money off until the future. Well, if you don't have him on the roster next year, I guess you could look at it and say, we can just pay him like he is on the roster, and we're okay because we got Trey Lance. But here's where it's interesting because what we found out is Dak Prescott has to be involved in the restructuring. He basically has to give the thumbs up and the okay for them to do that. And what they did was they added two more voidable years, which means they could stretch out and put some more money elsewhere. So in, in a way, what you're actually getting is Dak Prescott and the Cowboys are communicating. And what I will say in comparison to the last time where Stephen Jones literally was throwing Dak Prescott under the bus and telling him, you know, he's got to leave money on the table for others and can't take too much of the pie. And the pie's got three halves, you know, when it, when, it, when a pie actually, you know, halves are only two. But be that as it may, they are communicating each way. And the thing that you have to say is, you haven't heard anything negative from either camp. You haven't heard anything, you know, Dak, of course, is always going to say, you know, I'll let my people handle it. But you haven't heard the Cowboys, which typically when it comes time to pay somebody, are usually 
kind of throwing them under the bus. And I know people will say, well, maybe the Cowboys were the ones that had the opposition attorneys on the uh, the air trying to make Dak look bad so he would cut the deal. I, I don't I actually, the more I think about it, with them giving him their attorney to keep him out of trouble, I don't think that that's really the case. But I wanted to go to ESPN's NFL Live because they're going to discuss it. What's interesting is um, Dan Graziano back in September was talking about how the Cowboys could save $34 million on the cap if they trade or cut Dak before March. And that didn't happen. But what he didn't tell you was, yeah, you'd save $34 million on this year's cap, but then you got about 25 then add it onto the 36 that's already there. So it doesn't really help you. But let's go to the tape. Definition of all in may be different from some Cowboys definition of all all in or maybe Cowboys fans, I should say. But a couple of moves came out of Dallas over the weekend. Linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch retired. They also released wide receiver Michael Gallup. Now all eyes turn to Dak and his contract. So, Adam, what more can you tell us about his situation? Well, Laura, as Field Yates reported today, he's reworked his contract, but it's a situation where he still has not gotten the long-term extension, and he's still sitting on the Cowboys' books for over $55.5 million, so it's still a big number. And the fact of the matter is, that is really stifling to their salary cap, and Jerry Jones says they're all in, but the fact of the matter is, basically, they can't do a lot because of that number, and they're in a situation where after this year, Dak Prescott can become a free agent, he can't be tagged, he can't be traded. So this becomes a real quandary that's only going to grow in stature as time goes on. Yeah, reallocating $4 million of the $59 million that they're dealing with there. Mina, what do you think about the Cowboys not committing to a long-term deal with Dak? It has to say something, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. we'll see. There's still time left. Mm -hmm. um, I just can't help but marvel at how much leverage Dak Prescott has. Like, we talk a lot about Kirk Cousins being a legend at the bank because of the way, you know, he played things out with the tag and then getting those guaranteed deals. Dak Prescott has followed a, a fairly similar, not exactly the same, playbook. Because think about this, Laura. Kirk Cousins this year signed a contract as a, as a true free agent for four years, $180 million. If Dak Prescott had been a free agent this offseason, $50 million a year, easily. If he's mm. a free agent next year, I can only imagine the kind of money he were to get if he were to play next year at the same level he played at during uh, the regular season. I realize that's an operative word, that phrase there, uh, this mm. year. Um, and to that end, there's no reason why he should take any sort of discount from the Dallas Cowboys, especially given, as you guys laid out, his contract uh, does, and the current cap hit, does prevent them from doing certain signings and, and spending their money. Uh, from Dallas's perspective, I'll say this. The likelihood that they would move on from Dak Prescott and improve at the quarterback position is very very low coming mm. off of this show where we're talking about how desperate minnesota is now and the kind of trades they'd be making and it's still just a shot in the dark in the draft dallas has one of those quarterbacks that every team wants and so I, I feel like they should be motivated to get something done i don't know if they will based on how this is dragged out and uh Dak prescott has all the leverage in the world there you go. Yeah, there is time. Look, the five million dollars they converted over the weekend, there was a deadline on that. That mm -hmm. was a roster bonus, and if it had triggered, they wouldn't have been able to convert that money. They still have almost twenty-eight million in salary this year that they could uh, knock down and, and convert into bonus if they did uh, a restructure. But the problem is every time you do a restructure, it adds to the twenty twenty-five cap charge, which is already up to forty million, and they don't want that to get any bigger. So I think the interesting point here is they added two void years to the contract. They could not do that without Dak Prescott's permission. So at least we know they're talking uh, and that he was willing to, to accommodate them to that extent. I think the news of today of the roster bonus being restructured makes me more optimistic that they might get to an extension at some point. There you go. All right. So let's uh, do an NFL. Okay. So there you have it. You know, in the end, Dak needs the Cowboys for this season and the Cowboys need Dak. And if Dak has to realize that, you know, I need to do a deal that allows them to try and field the best team possible. 
and let's see what happens between the two. Hopefully, they're having a come to Jesus moment where Dax says, "Look, I'm, 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 I'm good. I've got my, my, my girlfriend. I got my baby. I got money in the bank. You know, I don't want to be disrespected, but I want to win a Super Bowl, and I need you guys to be on the same page for me to give you guys a home team discount." We'll have to wait and see how it works out. But as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Peace.